Nobody, anybody, anybody? Acolytes, I saw somebody out there that was short. I know I did. Okay. Come on, yeah, the short people, come on. Come on, <laughs> Kathy, come on. <clears throat> come on up, guys. Come on up. You guys don't know me, right? No, come on up. You can sit together. So my name is Sydney. What, what's, your, what's your name? My name's Eleanor. Eleanor, it's nice to meet you. What's your name? What's your name, I'm sorry? Addie. And your name? Griffin? Yeah. Oh, good. And here's somebody who's too shy, which is fine. Come on up. Hi, Savannah. I don't blame you. I don't blame you a bit. I'm a grandma, but I'm not a mommy right now. Well, I'm a mommy, too. So were you guys here last week when Allison talked about stewardship? No? Did anybody remember stewardship? The choir remembers. I hear them up there. Um, we talked about, what did we talk about? Did we talk about what stewardship means? Does anybody remember that? Anybody remember what it means? No. It means taking care of, taking care of things and making sure that they're okay. And we've been doing some stuff at church the last few weeks since Easter. Have you participated in any of those things in class or at church? Huh? Mm-mm, mm-mm. Do you do anything at home to take care of the earth, to take care of, the, of cre God's creation? What do you do? Awesome, a compost bin at her dad's house. What, what about you? You clean up the school trash, that is so cool. And what about you? You have a compost bin too. Gosh, I wish I did, that's awesome. Do your parents help you with that kind of stuff? Yeah. Do you think of things that are kind of hard to do, that might be hard to do for creation? Can you think of anything? Is composting kind of hard sometimes? No, it's easy? Tell them, will you please? <laughs> um, that's great. So if there are things that you find hard to do, do you ask your mommy and daddy for help? Yeah. If there's things that just seem too big, can you ask anybody else for help? Mm -hmm. Who can you ask? Your parents? Anybody else? How about God? Can you ask God for help? Yeah. And our gospel today says that God left us something to always help us, our comforter and our redeemer, the Holy Spirit, who can help us with anything. The gospel says the Holy Spirit is going to teach us everything. So I brought you a little things because I want you to remember how special you are and that you can do anything with the help of God and that God's always there. So here's a bookmark. And this is about how special you are. And you can keep this and help you remember. It's a little weird, yeah, I agree. It is kind of weird. It, yeah, the girl is kind of weird, but she's got all these things that are like her dreams. It is kind of cool. I like them. So anyway, just be yourself. And with God's help, you can do whatever you want to do. Thank you. She just gave me a paper clip that fell out of my pocket, I think. So you guys can stay up here. I need all the help I can get always, OK? Or you can, or you can go back and sit with your adults. I'm going to go over here, because I have some notes, and it's easier for me to talk sometimes from notes. Um, so, what am I doing up here? I'm sure you're wondering. I know I am. Um, one of my friends in choir said to me, um, so I hear you're preaching. What's that about? And I went, I don't know. <laughs> um, actually, I'm here because I have been for 18 years on the Environmental Commission of the Diocese of Oregon. And I was outed as being that to, uh, to the clergy in this place because I put a little article in the Episcopal News. Um, and it really is something that I'm extremely passionate about. Um, my glasses are on my head, so I can't read my notes, so we're going to wing it. Um, oh, I have a friend. <laughs> See? Thank God for our friends, right? We get by with a little help from our friends. Um, I asked for some help on giving a sermon from Ian because it's been a long time since I did this. And we talk a lot because I've never had a class on homiletics. Um, I confess to being an attorney, and I hope you won't hold that against me, but that was my training. So he did help me, and I prayed and prayed and prayed about this, and then I opened my email this week, and there was Allison's Gospel Reflections. And I went, she took my stuff. <laughs> it was like, okay, this is what I was going to say. Now what am I going to do? 
And then I went, well, wait, that's what you're preaching about is the Holy Spirit. And if we're all praying about this, then the same words are going to come to us and the same thoughts and the same reflections. And so I'm going to use some of Allison's words that I kind of thought myself because I think we were in kind of sync here. First of all, she says, again, the shalom of God, the peace of God offered for the love of the world. And you're going to hear about that from the choir here pretty quick. There's a lovely piece that Tiffany was kind enough to give us to sing about peace. The part of the gospel that really spoke to me is the advocate, the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name will teach you everything. And that's, that's pretty awesome comfort, at least to me. The gospel today is a promise of an advocate with the Holy Spirit. The breath of God is what we have. Our inspiration. The definition of inspiration is divine influence. That's pretty cool. And an act of breathing in and inhalation. So when we ask the Holy Spirit, we're breathing in the breath of God, and it can inspire us. And again from Allison, we are given the Holy Spirit so that we may also be advocates, as flawed as we are. And I confess to being probably the most flawed in this room at this point. Um, but I have a story for you, my own personal story. I am extremely flawed, but called by the Holy Spirit. Since I was a little girl in fifth grade, I wanted to be a lawyer. And I'm old enough that when I was in fifth grade, only boys were lawyers. But that's what I wanted. I didn't get there until I was in my 30s. When I got there, my first year, I did pretty well first semester. And then second semester, there's a brick in the road. Because when I was in high school, I had to give a speech in speech class where I couldn't graduate. And I almost dropped out of high school to avoid that experience, because I was terrified. So we have to do an argument, an oral argument, your second semester of law school, after you've written a brief about it. <sighs> and I thought, God, you called me to this. You called me to this instead of seminary. Are you going to stop me now? And I prayed, and I prayed, and I prayed. And I shook, and I shook, and I shook. And I went in there, and um, I would do this, but I don't want to embarrass myself. My feet were crisscrossing. My hands were under the podium so you couldn't see them. But I did it. I did it, and I won that round. I know, right? And then I went on to a couple of more. Now, I want to tell you, this is not, was not, at the time, a mountaintop experience. We live into our call. It is only in hindsight that we can see it for what it is, because now this is just about all I do is speak to people. And so, it was not me. It is not me today. It is the Holy Spirit. And what I've learned over the years is that the only way that I can continue to do this is to pray every time before I start. Because my feet are still shaking and my hands are still shaking, but I can talk through the power of the Holy Spirit when it matters to me, and this matters to me very dearly. Again, from Allison, God's work is always subversive. Subversive it is, indeed. Subversive means changing a policy or a way of doing things, and that is what we have to do in order to save our planet. It is nothing less than that. Um, that is to be the hands and feet of God. I do not believe in my heart that God wants this planet to fail. But we've got our work cut out for us. That's what we have to do. We have to save the earth. And we, as Easter people are the ones that must take charge and must do this. We must resurrect the planet, and it's nothing less than that. For our planet and for each other, which means we must do the work of reconciliation, the work of shalom and peace, and be able to see the face of Christ in each other, no matter how much we disagree, and no matter how much our government may disagree. This is also a social justice issue. The most vulnerable of us are the ones most suffering from climate change and other things that are happening that are destroying our planet. And so, we have to join together, join hands and spirits together in order to do this work. You all out there may not believe you have a call. I certainly didn't. I was raised an Episcopalian. 
God's frozen chosen, you know? <laughs> Sit in the pew, keep your head down. But I learned that there's a lot more than that. This is the best place to be to do the work we're given to do. And if you believe that you don't have a call or you believe that you're too flawed to answer that call, answer it anyway. Have a chat with the Holy Spirit about that. Amen.